what's going on YouTube, Juan Valdez here and today in this video I'm going to be going over how a new brand that we started last month did over 157k in revenue. Now I know I haven't been on here too much and I, I've been slacking on my content game but I've, I'm going to start working on a lot more just to get this thing off the floor. It honestly took a lot more time for me and the team than I thought. And so obviously just as expected, right, anything that can give you uh, great results or you can do, um, you know, those kind of numbers with, you know, it makes sense as to why it requires like a decent amount of work to kind of get it off the floor. So uh, that's why I haven't been on act as active on here, but I promise I will be actually recording a lot more videos for you guys. I'm, go I'm aiming right now because this is taking even still. Um, a good amount of time so i'm aiming to at least do a video a week just documenting the journey for this specific brand with you guys and the reason i wanted to do that is because i know that you guys will get a ton of value some of you guys have been following me for some time and you know obviously i try to provide you guys with all the insight and strategies that i'm using in the e-commerce space at right now in time not like outdated information and so i do think that what we're doing and what we're working on is some of the strategies we're using to you know take brands for example like this from zero to uh, 157K within 30 days. I'll show you guys. Now, that is a screenshot simply because Shopify doesn't let you check like last month, but I can, I'm gonna pull up the app just to kind of show you guys because I know there'll be some doubters, some naysayers. We're obviously, it's the 2nd of March, but you guys can see so far we're at about. 40,000 in revenue. So, and then last month, just to obviously again clarify, because I know there's going to be some naysayers like, yo, does he's showing screenshots, but I ain't got a lie. So, let me just pull up the specific date. So, I'm just, I'm going to pull up the specific date range for you guys. So, we're going to do last 30 days right here, just to verify. Last 30 days. Then I'm going to hit apply. I'm looking for revenue, not all oh, these are the reports. Give me one second. Let me uh put the sales for the last 30 days. So actually I thought it was a little bit more than 150. It looks like it was actually 162,000 total in revenue. This is counting January 1st to January 3rd. I'm looking for let me just do these exact dates because I'm not sure what I don't want any confusion here. So we'll do the 1st of February till the 28th, just to make sure. Boom. Apply. There you go. Those are the actual sales right there. Boom. So just wanted to be, uh, obviously I like to be as transparent as possible with you guys, so I wanted to kind of clarify, but... Um, again, those are kind of the results we were able to get again with this brand new, specifically branded store. And so we've done this, these kind of numbers before with uh, drop shipping stores, but there's a difference between doing this with doing those kind of numbers with a drop shipping store and a brand store. And I'm kind of, I'm going to be talking about that a lot more throughout the next few videos because uh, the content that I'm going to be recording for you guys from here on out is going to be all based around branding, like specifically branded stores, branded e-commerce businesses. And the reason why is because I think that that's where you guys will get a lot of value from, again, uh, being in the e-commerce space. So I'm going to dive right into um, some specific points that I wanted to go over, uh, just like a general overview of the steps and processes that me and the team went through to literally go from zero to 157,000 in 30 days with a brand new brand store. And now, obviously, for some of you guys, it may be a little bit easier to do this. For some of you guys, it may not. It, this is all based on experience level. But I'm going to be going through a lot more content videos, going over, uh, based on your situation, how you can do the same. Obviously, these results, results aren't typical. Like, I've been in this space for some time now, and I've spent time and you know resources and money learning from like the best people to be able to get results like this but um this are you know these are attainable results so i'll kind of just jump right into it one of the first things that we focused on when uh you know kind of getting started is really on the product right so i know a lot of you guys like a lot of people talk about you know the importance of the product but in reality obviously the product is important because you have to make sure that whatever products you are planning on selling in the e-commerce space is actually a product that there is actual demand in and so for us what we got started we focused on finding a product that there was obviously a specific demand in right uh, by specific people um, not like a general broad audience but 
there's definitely a demand in for that specific audience that would be interested in that product. So that was the first thing. What we did is we spent some time looking. If you see me looking away, I just have some notes I kind of put together here for you guys. So that's what I'm looking over. I have my screen set up. Well, the first thing we did is found another store that was selling the exact same product. Typically me, I'm a huge believer in, you know, modeling after success. So I'm not a huge fan of just like, finding a product that nobody else is selling and trying to like make that product work. I much rather do the research, find at least one store or website that is selling that product and then build off of that. So that's the first thing I did. Um, then from there, uh, I spent a little more time doing a little bit more research just to verify that that product is actually is an actual demand in. And so what I do is I spend some time researching on Facebook, Google, specifically Google Trends. And I also confirmed that the traffic that this other store was getting for this specific product was actually pretty high, meaning that they were getting over a few hundred thousand visitors a month. The reason why I do that is because if a store can afford to get over a few hundred thousand visitors a month, they're not getting those visitors for free. So that means they're paying for advertising to get all those visitors. And so if they're doing that, it's because they're making a return. So that's typically what I look for as far as like doing research. But that was pretty much the first phase as far as narrowing down what kind of products or which product we should actually start testing for this specific brand, right? From there, what we decided to do is after we found, you know, we kind of verified that this product is indeed a product we should actually uh, focus on. We then focus on coming up with the name for the brand that the, the product can fall under. And I'll touch more upon that later on because that is important. You wanna make sure that when you're focused on a brand, there's a difference between having a brand that focuses on one product and a brand that focuses on like a line of those specific products for that brand. So we'll, we'll touch on that. Uh, maybe not in this video, but on another video for sure. But what we then did is focused on getting a logo made. So we got a lo we got our name down, then we got a logo made. Obviously we verified the domain, make sure that's good. But we got the logo made and that was pretty important because obviously this is what's gonna be going on the product. From there, what we focused on is product sourcing. Now, obviously a lot of you guys know that we got started with the drop shipping model. And I believe that anyone in the e-commerce space or that's just getting started in the e-commerce space, you should start off with the drop shipping model, but then you should transition onto building a brand around the products that you get results with. So in this case, since we already have the resources and you know we're more willing to test and like lose a few hundred bucks on testing, we don't really mind. So we took a step ahead and we just went straight to um, ordering this product. And specifically what we did is we went on Alibaba and found a manufacturer for the product. Um, then from there, we found one that had like decent pricing. And the first thing we did, we don't just jump the gun and order like a thousand units. That would be obviously insane. What we do is uh, we start by ordering a few samples. So we ordered, I have it right here. We ordered seven samples. It was $40, $40 for each product. That's how much we're getting it for. And uh, it, we had to pay for some shipping. So total, we had to spend $350 to get some samples of the product. Now these samples, they came with our own custom logos, custom packaging, pretty much everything as if it's our product already. And so that was pretty cool because that's what we're, we were focused on, right? For this specific brand, we're not taking the approach. We're just having them like send out the product to the customer. We want to make sure we know what the product looks like. And so that is something you want to do. You want to verify that the product you're getting from your supplier is actually indeed what you're looking for. So we got that. It took us roughly 15 days to get the product. Then from there, what we focused on was leveraging the product, the fact that we had it to make unique content. So um, we have on our team, luckily we have a great videographer. He's a, he's, a, he's a savage. He helped us out with getting content for the product. So we got custom made images, custom made videos. And this is huge because this is one of the best parts about focusing on building a brand, right? When you can get unique content that you can make, it's a lot easier for you to run ads, to have, build a brand, have your own custom unique looking store, all these different things because you have your own custom content. You're not modeling and taking somebody else's content, putting it on yours. Like people aren't seeing the same images all over the place, same ads. Like you're coming into the market with your own unique content, which is huge because if one of the reasons why you know, people don't really get too much results with e-commerce is because they think that they're going to come in, just duplicate everybody else's ads and, you know, the same pictures and images they have, same stores, and then they're going to get the same exact result as they are. And in reality, that's not how it works. Uh, you need to do a little bit better than that right now in our day and age. So that's what we did. What we focus on is getting variations of videos also that could be repurposed and used for advertising on different platforms. And I'm going to touch on this in just a second. So we got the content. And so mind you, so far, that's what we focused on, like up to, so far up to date, right? Those are literally the steps that we went through. There are a little bit more like specifics that we did, but this is like a general overview of what kind of went down. Once we did that, we transitioned on to building the store. The store, we only were focused on one specific product. So we focused on building a one product branded store, meaning that the store was focused around one product and all the content images, everything was around content for that specific product, right? 
And so uh, it was pretty easy to make the store because again, if you only have one product, there's not too much you can really add in. But one thing that we that's important when it comes to building a brand, building a brand is not just about having unique content and having like your own videos, having a logo, things like that. Like it's a lot more than that. It, it's that and more. Uh, one of the most important things of your brand is like your mission statement, for example, having a cause that you're a part of. Uh, for example, our cause is that we donate a percentage of revenue to a specific charity, right? And so that's important because if you don't have a, a mission statement and a cause part of the part of your brand, it's going to be still kind of hard to differentiate yourself from like any other competitor, right? But if you have a mission statement, you have a cause, people want to be part of that. And so it's going to help you actually convert a lot more of the people that are seeing your ads or coming onto your store or thinking about buying from you, all those things. So that's what we focused on. You know, we focused on building the store, having this mission statement, getting our own logos on the store, our own content. Everything looks completely branded at this point, right? You know, we spent some time kind of studying some of the other successful stores or brands in this space, and we basically modeled after their after them, right? We didn't go and copy their sites, but we got some ideas and some inspirations of how they have their stores laid out, things like that. After we did that, then we transitioned over to the marketing. And so we start off mainly with Facebook and Instagram, again, running different Facebook ads and Instagram ads, and that worked really well. That was enough to already start getting traffic through the door, and once we started seeing that happen, that's when we decided to also test out other avenues. Now, what I am going to be sharing a lot more with you guys is uh, utilizing other traffic sources. Now, something that's been working really well for us is also adding in um, Google ads and YouTube ads into our marketing. Now, this is going to be like have to be like a video on itself, like... Uh, I'm going to go over with you guys marketing funnels, understanding how you can be wherever your customers are. And the reason why for us, we were able, I think that we were able to scale so fast um, and get the results that we're getting even up to date. Because in reality, we also, one thing I didn't even mention to you guys is that we have not scaled to our full potential. Like I think on ads, we're spending roughly like anywhere from like two to 3,000 a day. And revenue has been like anywhere from like five to 7,000 a day. And we've had our biggest day, which was actually like 11,000 in revenue in one day. Uh, and by the way, profit margins on this specific brand is around 59%. It is profitable. It's not just all ad spend. It's 49%. Sorry about that. 49% profit margins on this brand specifically after, you know, ad spend, product costs and things like that. And we're also selling a higher ticket product. Our price point for our product is a little over 200 bucks. So that's that. Now, when it comes to marketing, what we're also testing is other avenues. And so the reason we can test, for example, Google ads and YouTube ads is because we have our own unique content. So for example, Google ads and YouTube ads are honestly like completely like insane like platforms to use and they work really, really well. If you do have, uh, well, Google ads works great if you have uh, just regardless like for e-commerce, but YouTube works really well if you have your own like custom and unique made content and videos that you can run as ads on YouTube. So I, the reason why I think we got as good results is because we were basically everywhere our customers are. So and ideally, you want to be everywhere your customers are on the internet. And so, for example, if somebody would engage with our ad on Facebook or Instagram, they would then you know do some research on Google, maybe look us up. We would pop up on Google right away. And it's like, okay, cool. If they don't buy from there and they go watch something on YouTube, they would get retargeted with a video on there and they'd be like, you know, what the hell is going on, obviously. So then they get reminded of us again. And so... From there, if they didn't buy from YouTube, not too many people buy from YouTube. Many people see the video and they'll go back on Google, look you up and then buy from there. But basically, after they interacted with our store or our brand once, they were basically going to be seeing us or they are seeing us every, and anywhere they go on the internet. Whether it be like a website, if that website allows, you to, allows Google to advertise, they'll be able to see our ads on that website as well. Uh, if they go back on YouTube, they're going to see our ads. If they go on Instagram, they're going to see our ads. If they go on Facebook, they're going to see our ads. If they go on Google, pretty much anywhere that they go, they're going to be seeing our ads. And so that's really called a marketing funnel. That's, again, a whole other conversation because I've just started to really like learn about this and like get all this down. As far as like Facebook and Instagram, I've already know, learned how to run Instagram and Facebook ads. That's, you know, that's obviously something that we kind of start with. But utilizing Google and YouTube is a lot more advanced and it's a lot, I would say it's a little bit more difficult just because, at least for me, it's like a brand new platform. But I will be sharing a lot more insight with you guys because it's honestly working in, in, in extremely well. Like there were some days where we get a lot better return from Googling YouTube than we do on Facebook. So um, I'm going to be sharing a lot more on that. 
Now, one of the things I kind of wanted to go over is this is something that you guys can also do, right? This isn't something that's like completely rocket science. Like, yeah, it's a little bit easier for us because me and my business partner have been doing this for quite some time now. But this is something that you guys can do. And the good part is once you learn how to do this with one product, you can then expand to other products and other brands. For example, we actually just focused on uh, just recently within the last week or so, we just rolled out a new product within the same brand. So ideally, the focus that you guys want to take uh, to kind of give you guys a bigger perspective is there's two different perspectives you can take, two different avenues, depending on whether you have a budget and experience or whether you don't. I think if you've already been in the e-commerce space and you have a budget to work with, you can take the same approach that I kind of just went over where you just jump the gun and kind of order some samples of a product and just, you know, kind of go through this process. Now, if you don't have experience and you don't have as big of a budget, I would start off using the drop shipping model, find a product that does really well for you. Then after you have that product that's bringing in consistent sales, like consistent sales daily, like for like one or two weeks, then I would focus on taking this approach and actually building a brand around it. You still need a lot of the core principles that you need to start a drop shipping business to be able to do this. So you can't disregard the skill sets that are required to actually build a drop shipping business because in reality, you still need those same skill sets. So that's what I would recommend for you guys to do. The best part is, again, like I said, once you know how to do it once, you can duplicate it over and over and over again. And ideally, once you start work with the first brand, you want to focus on one initial product, but then you want to start potentially like expanding within that brand. So rolling out different products within that same brand, because it's super easy. If you already have a lot of visitors and you already have your own custom unique made content, things like that, just by you rolling out other products, just by when you drive people to your store for your main product and they see your other products, you're probably going to get some sales from that. So you can start testing out products like that. But then obviously later on, if you have other products you want to test or other brands, you can obviously branch out and you know focus on building the, the, the new brand or a separate brand with the same process. So I know we covered a lot there. Again, I just wanted to give you guys an overall perspective of the literally the steps and process that we went through to, again, take this new brand from zero to um, 147k was it yeah, 157,000 last month and honestly the reason why we haven't scaled as much what I didn't mention is it's been taking us a little bit longer to actually get the inventory that we need to fulfill the orders and so that's why we haven't scaled our ad budgets up or, or try to really uh, scale up a little more from here on out once we have full inventory and actually more than enough inventory we're then going to focus on increasing ad spend doing influencer marketing all these things I didn't even get to cover how we did do a little bit of influencer marketing at first, but again, I'm gonna be documenting a lot more, so I'll mention exactly how we went about that in the upcoming video. So um, if you guys wanna learn a lot more about this approach that you can take to build an actual e-commerce brand, but also learn about e-commerce in general, how to start off with the dropshipping model, then build a brand, or just cut right to the brand, there's gonna be a link down below where you guys can check out a free training. Um, again, it's completely up to you guys, I'm not, here trying to sell you guys training that I don't think is valuable to you guys. You guys can check it out below. It'll give you guys a whole breakdown of exactly what we did and how we did it. And if you guys want to learn more, obviously, then you can go from there. Reach out if you have any questions and let us know if you guys want to work with us. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys got value from this video, I'd appreciate it if you drop the like uh, down below. Also, any questions you have about building a brand or just e-commerce overall, drop it down in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to get back to you guys and answer any questions you have. And uh, make sure you guys stay tuned because I do have a lot more videos coming. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.